today we are going to discuss the basic chapters of the spectroscopy that is the mass spectrometry which is very important topic as concerned in the analytical chemistry and as far as the to determine the structures of the any unknown compounds the mass spectroscopy is commonly used today we are going to cover half of the part of the mass spectrometry <coughs> we are going to before discussing the mass spectrometry first we discuss about the history of the mass spectrometry mass spectrometry mainly discovered by the jj thomson that's why it is called as father of mass spectrometry before going to discuss the mass spectrometry first we understand why there is a mass spectrometry is there is this spectroscopic technique then also the name is given as mass spectrometry metry not a scope what is the difference between spectroscopy and the spectrometry first understand the first understand the title of the our chapter that is mass is you know very well that is the mass of any uh, that is more mass of any atom and spectrometry what is mean by the spectrometry and what is mean by the spectroscopy actually spectroscopy we already discuss uh it is the interaction of the matter with the radiations or the any light that is electromagnetic radiations that is the matter plus light in case of the metry spectrometry actually it is a quantitative determinations of the quantitative determination of the spectrum or it is also called as quantitative or measurement it is a measurement technique that's why it is called as metry metry means the measurement and the quantitative measurement this is the one difference and another difference is the if you see in case of the all spectroscopy technique there is the graph intensity versus the frequency in case of the spectroscopy because we deals with the light study of light how light reacted with the matter and we use the graph intensity versus the frequency but in case of the mass spectrometry we do not deals with the light so our graph is by this in intensity and intensity not intensity here means number of particles reach to detector and here is the mass to the charge ratio because mass spectrometry not deals with the light it deals with the masses of any molecules the basic difference between the spectrometry and spectroscopy is this graph because we not deal with the study of the light or the frequency in case of the spectroscopy as we are we are seeing in the uv spectroscopy there is the wavelength versus absorption in case of the ir spectroscopy there is a wave number versus the transmittance uh, but in case of the ir spectroscopy uh, in case of the mass spectroscopy we not deals with the light and another and common difference between the mass spectrometry and the spectroscopy is spectroscopy spectroscopy is theoretical concept is a theoretical concept that it not generate the any results and as opposite to 
this spectrometry it is a practical application which generate the results it is called we generate the spectrum this is the basic difference between the spectroscopy and the spectrometry now we are going to discuss what is the basic principle behind the mass spectrometry any molecule that bombarded with the electron which causes the ionization that is n plus radical cation to electrons when we bombard this electron to this molecule this electron will remove one electron from this molecule and which form the radical cation actually we have often there are mass spectrometry basically involves three major part first ionization second one is the analyzer third one is the the detector first here is the actual ionization happens and these ionized molecules or the fragments goes to the analyzer and depending upon the mass to the charge ratio mass to the charge ratio that is ampere ratio the analyzer will detect and it goes to the detector and detector will detect the masses of that fragments what actually do the analyzer depending upon the mass of the fragment actually analyzer this is the ionization source it goes to the magnetic analyzer the principle is based on only one sentence any charged particle or the any charged molecule that deflected in the magnetic regions this is the one line principle that is any charged particle or the molecule that deflected in the analyzer that is any at applied magnetic fields this is the basic principle and the depending upon the masses of molecule the deflection is occurs in case of the this is for the lighter particle which deflected less as compared to the higher masses fragments if mass of the fragment is more that deflected more as compared to the lighter particles this is the main principle behind the mass spectrometry this is a general theoretical concept now we are observe this as a practical <coughs> see this example uh, this is the structure of neopentan ah, sorry before discussing this example first we see what are the main applications of the mass spectrometry mass spectrometry basically used for the determining the molecular masses of the atom thus determine the molecular mass and it mainly applied to determine the molecular formula that is uh, nowadays mainly hrms technique that is high resolution mass spectrometry is commonly used for determine the molecular formula of the any compounds and third one main application to determine the 
elements present. This is very important applications. The mainly mass spectrometry, there are the elements like chlorine, bromine, sulfur. Uh, these elements can be detected by using the mass spectrometry because they form clusters with the molecules and they can easily detected by using the mass spectrometry. No other spectroscopy is used to determine the element present. You uh, suppose we take an example of the NMR spectroscopy. NMR is not also used for element uh, determination or the identification. IR is also not used for the identification of the elements. Only the mass spectrometry is only one technique that that spectroscopy or the spectrometric technique which determines the element present. Among the four, UV, NMR, IR, and the uh, mass only mass can identify the which elements present. And fourth one is the main application of the mass spectrometry is the to identify the structure. Nowadays, by using the fragmentation pattern, we can easily identify the structure of the compound or the what are the fragmented structure of the uh, any molecules and these applications nowadays mainly used in case of the proteomics and the metabolomics nowadays many hyphenated techniques like LCMS, LC, MSMS, LC TOF is commonly used for the metabolomics, proteomics variety of applications of the mass spectrometry these are the main four applications of the mass spectrometry before discussing the all theory and the instrumentation parts. Now we are going to take an example of the new pattern. How new pattern? By solving the example of the new pattern, how we compare this with the, our principle of the mass spectrometry? Uh, first about the new pattern. If we bombard it with the electron, it will remove the one electron from any methyl group. And that will form radical cation, that is C5H12. It only removes the one electron that form the radical cation. That electron may be from DCS3 also, DCS3 also, and DCS3, DCS3 also. That's why it is denoted as, as like this. And upon the fragmentation of these C5H12 radical cation, we got mainly four fragments that is C4H9, C3H6, C2H5, C2H3. How these fragments are formed? If we simply replace these CS3 groups, we do the fragmentation of this CS3 group, we got this. And upon the fragmentation of this C4H9, if we remove another CS3 from this, we got this fragment. Upon removal of the another one hydrogen, we got this and alternate view, we got this fragment. If you see, the molecular masses of these fragments are, these are about 57, 41, 29 and 27. <coughs> but, and the relative intensity or the relative abundance of these fragments are around 100%. 41.7%, 38.5% and 51.7%. How these examples are correlated with the, our basic principle of the mass spectrometry? Now, suppose we consider this is our pentane of molecule. When bombarded with the electron, that forms that C5 H12. This is the molecular arm or this is also called as parent arm. Upon the fragmentation of <coughs> and this is our mainly this is our molecular ion or the it is also called as parent ion. When fragmentation of these parent ion we got these fragments. One, two, three, four. And what is means by the relative intensity or the relative abundance? Actually, we plot a graph
This is the relative intensity or it is also called abundance. Relative intensity of the abundance and here is the mass to charge ratio. <coughs> Draw the spectrum. Our molecular ion peak is around here is molecular weight. Uh, mass to the charge ratio is the 72. That is this. Around this 72. And our molecule, this fragment C4H9. Uh, this is first. We brought the 15, 13, 45. Our main base peak is around this. This is our fourth fragment that is C4H9 and next C3H6. Here the relative awareness around 41. C4H6 C2H5 C2H3 Here is the C2H5 Here is the C2H3 These are the peaks uh, These are the spectrum of these fragments uh, We not take and consider as this 60, 70, 80 Directly we take 100 We have relative intensity That is relative abundance Now we are going to discuss what is mean by the relative abundance. As we already discussed, three main components of the mass spectrometry that is ionization chamber, then the analyzer, then the detector. In the ionization, what happen? Molecule reacted with the or bombarded with the any electron that causes the ionization. Then ionization causes forms the various fragments. That fragments nothing but the these. When this fragment goes to the analyzer, which fragment is reached to the detector highest number? Highest number of fragment that reach to the detector is called as the that the relative abundance. Abundance means how many fragments, how many percentage of the fragment that reach to the detector. In this case, C4H9 consider as a 100% relative abundance. It means in these all fragments and molecular ion peak, these fragments which goes highest percentage reach to the detector. That's why it is taken as a or it is called as a base peak. This is very important. What is actually mean by the base peak? Base peak is the highest peak on the y axis which have the highest relative abundance and which is also called the 100% relative abundance or the relative intensity. <coughs>